Hey, morning, Heather. Morning. Just a slow one today. Yeah, totally. It's okay to run slowly. Absolutely. Enjoy. In fact, you should run slowly. All right, not all of the time, but including some easy slow runs into your running program can actually help improve your overall running. Don't believe me? Well, watch this video and let me explain. Are you guilty of believing many of these misconceptions when it comes to running pace? Do you think that in order to race fast, you need to run at that race pace in all of your runs? Or that the faster you run, the faster you'll get fit. Or if you did a slow run, that maybe your body would get used to that and you'd always run slowly. Or that you can't bear for your next run to be slower than your previous run because how can that be progression? Well, it is totally normal to have some of those feelings and those fears. And I must admit, it even took me a little while to post a slow run on Strava and not have to label it that it was one of my easy runs in case people thought that I was suddenly getting really slow at running. But I mean, who cares what people think? And if you do, well, the best way to keep those commentators quiet is to improve your overall running. And you can do that by including your slow run and having a very structured overall training program. note before we go on I mentioned a structured training program and that's because you can't do all of your runs super slow and then expect to be able to run fast just when you want to it's about finding the balance here yeah your slow runs are your easy runs they're at the other end of the spectrum from your speed work your tempo efforts your threshold intervals and if you've done those hard enough you probably actually want to go slow on your easy runs but if you still find yourself tempted to run those easy runs too hard let us break down some of the reasons why going slow is a good idea. We're going to try and convince you to go slow on your easy run. In order to get fitter and condition our bodies, we need to spend more time running. But we want to limit the stress on our bodies. So running easy will reduce the risk of injury, but it will allow you to get more of those valuable running miles. Embrace the freedom that a slow run gives you. You can use a route with mixed terrain or road crossings that you wouldn't normally use if you had specific pace goals in mind. And if you do get bored on your slow runs, use this as an opportunity to explore new routes or use something else to stimulate your mind like running with a friend or listening to a podcast that you wouldn't normally do if you had a specific session to do. We mentioned at the beginning that you can't do all of your runs slowly and expect to be able to run fast, which it's basically saying you need variety. So including slow runs allows you to have that variation in pace and just keep things more interesting and keep you improving. When running slowly, your body has plenty of oxygen, which allows it to oxidize fat as a fuel source to create energy, which is important because this is what your body's gonna use as its primary fuel source for long endurance events. And the more it does it, the better it'll get at it. Similarly, you can use your slow runs to teach your body to get energy from your stomach. Practice with various fuel sources while you do your slow run and find out what works best for you. The recovery run is just an easy run with the emphasis on helping you get over that previous workout. It helps to improve your blood flow, relax your muscles and mentally it just feels good. You'll often find that if you feel a bit sluggish you go and do that recovery run and you'll feel better afterwards. This is normally prescribed either a day or two days after a hard run. I'm sure I'm not speaking only for myself when I say it's much easier to motivate yourself to get out the door for something that you know is going to be pleasant versus something that you think might hurt a little bit. And that's what easy runs do. Slow runs are going to allow you to get out the door and just have a pleasant experience. So it's much easier to get going for them. And you can even make them social and invite some friends along. Similar to the last point, it saves energy and not just physical energy. It can get mentally quite tiring if every run you're going out and you're trying to hit certain pace, you're running hard, you're trying to look at various numbers on your watch and you're just always on. And it's good to just switch off and go out and enjoy that run and not really have to think about anything else. And this will also really help you to prevent getting any burnout or fatigue. We mentioned how working aerobically improves your body's ability to oxidize fat, but it goes further than that. Working aerobically can also improve your body's ability to deliver oxygen to the working muscles by increasing the capillary density. That's those tiny blood vessels that deliver the oxygen to the working muscles. It can also increase the amount of myoglobin and mitochondria in the cells to improve your ability 
body's ability to use oxygen to create energy. Running slowly allows you to run for longer. Say you're training for a marathon and you want to build up that mileage, well, that can be slow miles, but isn't necessarily easy. It's still just another reason of why you should sometimes run slow. And if all those aren't enough reasons, we've got one more for you. You should run slowly because the pros do. That's right, even the fastest endurance athletes in the world do a lot of their runs really, really slowly. Now we've convinced you that you do need to include slow runs in your training, you're probably wondering, how slow should I go? Well, it's a good idea to use heart rate and perceived effort to guide you as opposed to pace because that's a little bit more individual. Yeah, if you're using heart rate, you generally want to be around 60% of your max heart rate, which for most people will be around 110 to 120 beats per minute. And if you want to get gauges some other way, you could use your breathing. Uh, you should be able to hold a conversation quite easily. You shouldn't be getting out of breath. You should be able to have a full conversation with your mate you're running with without ever thinking about your breathing. With that in mind, if you do go uphill and your breathing starts getting hotter, slow it right down, even walk to keep that heart rate down and keep it aerobic on your easy runs. Now, believe it or not, some athletes and coaches will still think of slow, easy runs as jump miles and not include them. But if you do look at most elite runners, you will see that they go very slowly on their easy runs, which I take some kind of faith in. It's always good to see. So go out there and embrace that slow run, enjoy it, and think of all that energy you're saving then and put that into your hard work. And there really should be a spectrum and a difference between your runs. Well, let us know how you get on. Give us a like and remember to click that globe and subscribe.